All right, so I want to do a quick comparison between one-dimensional displacement versus distance, OK? So let's say that little Timmy goes out for a walk. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Little Timmy going for a walk, swinging the arms, stomping the feet, going for a walk. Little Timmy goes for a walk. Little Timmy's a little bit of a, a wanderer. Fair enough. He goes like this, he walks out this far, turns around, walks back this far. Oh, forgets, oh wait a minute, I had to get my calculator. Goes back this far, gets the calculator, and then at the end of the day, decides he's going to come back to where he started. But let's just go with where we're at right now, okay? We're going to start off with some displacements. And so I'm going to say that displacement number one is equal to 50 meters. I'm going to let this guy right here, displacement number two, be equal to, in magnitude at least, to 30 meters. And I know I haven't drawn this to scale. It's OK. We're just going to deal with the numbers. 30 meters. And the magnitude for displacement number three is going to be 40 meters. Now, I know that you can do the head math for this. I'm really not concerned about that. Uh, tell me right now. But let's just get it over with. How far is he going to end up away from home? 50 minus 30 plus 40. What's it going to be? 60. We can do this in our heads. But we're going to go through the formal process, OK? Um, so we've got to define for ourselves a reference frame. We're going to call this the origin, where he starts. We're going to call forward. Actually, you know what? Let's call it right. To the right, we'll call that positive. To the left is going to be negative. Up and down. Well, do the up and down directions matter for this? Not really. We already said it's going to be one dimensional. So we're, he's, we don't care if Jimmy jumps. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. If Timmy jumps, it doesn't matter, OK? But we could say up is positive and down is negative. It doesn't really matter. We're only dealing with a one-dimensional scenario here. Um, if I want to find delta D total, I'm going to say delta D capital T, displacement total, I'm going to have to add up delta D1, displacement 1, plus displacement 2, plus displa displacement 3, I think that makes sense. We're making up a formula here, but it's a very simple formula. We're just adding up all the displacements. You already did it in your head. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So as we sub in our values here, let's do that. Delta D1, displacement 1, is going to be positive 50.0 meters. And I'm, notice I'm adding in my signs to indicate direction as we go along here. So when you sub in your values, you're going to add in the sign to indicate direction. So I've got positive 50 meters. And really, we could add that up here and give an arrow to the delta D1. We could put an arrow on delta D2. And as you say, what should it be, positive or negative? Beauty. So when I sub it in down here, instead of saying plus delta D2, I'm going to say minus 30.0 meters. We could actually say plus negative 30 meters. But in the end, we can see it's going to be the same thing. And then plus delta D3 is going to be 40 meters. And as you guys told me already, what's the answer? Six, 60, yeah. Positive 60 meters. Now once I finish my calculation, as simple as this calculation may be, at the end, I want to associate a direction in words with this final answer. Um, do I have the right number of decimal places based on our, our significant digits rules? Okay, I've been consistent about that, so I'm not too worried about that. I can keep the 60.0, but instead of saying positive 60.0, I'm going to say 60.0 meters to the right. And then I could write myself a little therefore statement. If this had been a word problem, I could say, therefore, little Timmy's displacement is 60 meters right of where he started. Okay. And we get the idea of what dis displacement calculations may look like in one dimension. Now, that's the displacement. The distance, on the other hand, is how much ground little Timmy actually covered, like how many steps he kind of took. 
delta D total without an arrow is going to get us a different answer. It's going to be delta D1, no arrow, plus delta D2, no arrow, plus delta D3, no arrow. Now what I want you to keep in mind is that if you're just talking about distance, positive and negative don't matter because it's just how many steps you take. People say, What's your, what was the distance you walked today? Well, I stayed in the building all day, but I did a lot of walking up and down the science hallway. I did a lot of walking around my classrooms. I walked a lot of distance. What was your displacement? Well, I started my day in the science office and I ended my day in the science office. What was my displacement? Zero. If somebody said, what was your displacement today, Mr. Killens? I'd say it was zero. Oh, you didn't do much, did you? But if you ask me what my distance was, maybe a few kilometers. Just staying in the building here today. And probably you people too. You went out for lunch, you know, you did your thing. You probably had a pretty good distance on the clock today. Your displacement, you started at your locker, you ended at your locker. Did you have any displacement today? No. Nah. Okay, so that's the way it is. Displacement and distance, totally different things. But let's figure out what little Timmy's distance is going to be. Delta D1, 40 meters. Delta D2, 30 meters. And no sign necessary because distance doesn't care about direction. Distance only cares about how far, not how far and in what direction. Plus 40 meters. Oh, did I say 40 meters before I meant 50 meters? My fault. Somebody was trying to tell me and I wasn't listening. So 50 plus 30 plus 40 is 120? 120 point, oh, 120.0 meters. No direction associated. So if you ask somebody what the distance was for little Timmy versus displacement, it's going to be twice the answer. You see, you can't get these two things mixed up because they're totally, totally different, okay? The answers are going to be totally different. The definitions are totally different. The only thing really similar about them is they use some of the same information and the symbols look somewhat similar. But their actual meaning is completely different. Don't get them mixed up, okay? Now, here's the flip side. I'm going to throw in an extra thing. Velocity versus speed. And I'm just going to throw it into a column here on the right. Velocity gets calculated using displacement. And the definition of velocity is, and there's an arrow on it, how far you are displaced in a certain amount of time. So if I want to know my average velocity, v av, my average velocity, it's the amount that I'm displaced in a certain amount of time. And so if I were to say, oh, by the way, something I didn't tell you before, uh, Timmy did this whole thing in 95.2 seconds. He's a fast little boy, okay? 95.2 seconds. V average is and I'm going to use the positive sign in my calculation. Positive 60.0 meters. Remember, positive means right in this situation. Divided by 95.2 seconds. Somebody with a calculator. What's 60 divided by 95.2? What's 60 divided by 95.2? Around two. What is it? Significant digits to 0.63. Okay, I want to unround it first and then we'll round 0 it. 0.630252. 0 0.630252. Okay, I'll just take it out to there. As a rule of thumb, we'll go two, at least two digits further than the number of significant digits we're going to round to. Uh, and the units would be meters per second. And the answer is positive. And the gentleman says we're going to go to three sig digs. So positive 0 0.630 meters per second or 0 0.630 meters per second to the right. That's the average velocity. Now I want to find the average speed. The average speed doesn't use displacement. What do you figure it uses? Distance, right? You notice that cars have speedometers. They don't have velocitometers. Because if I used a velocitometer, and the cop said, hey, you're going to get a ticket. You were going at a, you had a velocity of 150 kilometers an hour. 
And I said, no, 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 my velocitometer said that I started my day at my house and I ended my day at my house. Velocitometer reads zero. Displacement was zero, numerator zero. Sorry, officer, my velocity was zero for the day. You can't give me any fines. It's not gonna hold up in a, law, a court of law. It's a stupid thing to say to a cop. Uh, they're gonna give you a hard time. Don't ever do it. But if the cop ever said your velocity was unlawful, you could say, Nope, sorry. And even if you wanted to extend the scenario and say, um, actually, I'm planning on being buried right beside my mother, and I was given, my mother gave birth to me uh, near the graveyard. I, uh, I'm sorry, I started my life near the graveyard, and I'm going to end my life around there too. Uh, my lifelong velocity is roughly zero. I can never get a speeding ticket. Well, not true. You can only not get a velocity ticket, right? Like, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's a stupid situation. But ve velocity, totally different than speed. You get the picture. Oh, not a problem. Yeah? Okay. We'll miss you. All right. Average speed. Average speed. So let's do this. Delta D total divided by delta T or for our situation, 120.0 meters divided by 95.2 seconds. And I'm running out of space on my piece of paper. But what's the, uh, what's the average speed? 120 divided by 95.2. We only need it to three sig digs. Um, oh, I should have said approximately equal to up here. What's 120 divided by 95.2? 1.26, so approximately 1.26 meters per second. Totally different. Did somebody get something different? Um, yeah. I just have a question. So the symbol for speed is just being up here? That's it, yeah. Velocity versus speed. Very, again, very similar symbols, but completely different meanings.